Welcome to our lecture online. Graphing functions in polar coordinates can be a little more challenging, and quite often we have no idea what the function might even look like. And so the best way to do that, unless you use a graphing calculator, is to set up a table of values. So let's say we try to graph the function r equals twice the cosine of theta. So what you want to do is you want to put in a number of values for theta, then you take the cosine of theta, and then you multiply that times 2, 2 times the cosine of theta, which after all is equal to r. And then you go ahead and you plot these points, and then you can see what it looks like and connect the points to form the graph on the, uh, on the x-y axis. So starting out with an angle of theta equals 0 degrees, the cosine of that is 1, and multiply times 2, we get 2. So at an angle of 0 degrees, which is along the x-axis, we take our first point right there. Then we move to an angle of 30 degrees, pi over 6, which is roughly in this direction. So this is roughly an angle of 30 degrees. And then we find that the cosine of that is 0.866, or twice that, 1.732. So along this, this uh, line right here, we find a distance of about 1.732, which is a roughly about there. Then we move another 15 degrees at an angle of 45 degrees. And at that angle, we see that the cosine is 0.707, or twice that is 1.414. So that puts us right about here. Then at an angle of 60 degrees, the cosine of that is 0.5, twice that is 1. So at an angle of 60 degrees, we're down to about 1. So you can see that there, if you connect those points, you would get a curve like that. And finally, when we go to 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, the cosine of that is equal to 0, twice that is equal to 0. So we're up at 90 degrees, which is along the y-axis. The distance from the origin is 0, so we have that point right there. And now when we connect those points, notice what we get. We get something that looks just like a semicircle. So what happens when we continue? Well, now we jump ahead to an angle of 135 degrees, which would be in this direction right here. And now, when we take the cosine of that, we get minus 0.707, twice that is minus 1.414. So instead of going in the positive direction, away from the origin, in the direction of the line that's made when we find an angle of 135 degrees, we have to go in the negative, the opposite direction. So when we go in the opposite direction, at one point, so we go in, in this direction instead, because we have a negative magnitude, so to speak, 1.414, that would put us right about here. And then, if we then go another 180 degrees, so now we're moving in the negative x direction, so we have a line in that direction, notice that the cosine of that is minus 1, twice as minus 2, so instead of going two units in the negative direction, we have to flip that over because it's negative two, we go two units in the positive direction, we, back, we end up back over here, and then if we connect those dots, you can see that we have the other half of the circle, and so when we move through an angle from zero to 180 degrees, or from zero to pi radians, we can see that the graph then forms a complete circle right here, with radius one centered at x equals one, y equals zero. Now, if we continue to move through an angle from 180 to 360 degrees, you'll find that we'll just simply go right over this very same circle again, so then we just simply start repeating the function. So here we have the graph represented by the equation r equals 2 times the cosine of, th of theta, and notice that would look very different if we try to graph that using the x-y coordinate system. But there you go, that's what that looks like. We'll do a few more examples and show you what the different kind of functions may look like as the angles change, as we add constants to the angle, as we put constants in front of the functions, you'll see that the graph continues to change, and we'll get some examples of that in the next several videos. That's how we do that.